Sega. You can prepare all you want, but when it comes to race day, sometimes the split-second decisions can mean the difference between victory and defeat. In our last video in the series, we're going to walk you through what it takes to give you the best possible chance of victory. I'm here with Christian West, who is the Chief Technical Officer for here at PlaySport Games. Christian, just before we start, can you talk a little bit about what you do on the game? So I'm involved with the gameplay programming, um, the artificial intelligence, and, and getting the race simulation into a really good, fun place that kind of mimics what you see on television at the weekend. Great. And in, in our last two videos, we were talking about um, building the team and mastering the tech. Yeah. Uh, but now it comes down to it will be win the race. Um, so what we're going to go through today is you're going to walk us through a little bit uh, a race weekend and show us what players can do in terms of options of what they can do at the track and what they can do to prepare for it. With the game, you've got you've kind of got two major aspects to it. You've got the kind of management side, which is like building yeah. the team, developing the car. These are your kind of long-term strategy decisions. And then the race day itself is all about getting the maximum from the car possible. So it's all about finding those kind of tenths of a second that will that you will get you a better result than you really should have with your sure. car. Uh, and this is where it all plays out. So in practice, mm -hmm. in practice, you're kind of building up knowledge of the track, of the tires. Um, building up knowledge of different race strategies and and developing uh, you know the best setup you can to get the maximum performance yeah. from the car and also getting a kind of an idea of of the track conditions you know each each circuit kind of has different amounts of grip or tire wear so it's yeah. about kind of gaining that knowledge really so we can see that we've got our two main drivers here but we've also got our reserve driver so we can actually put our reserve driver in for practice as well to get their experience level up a little bit yeah you can and and they have different kind of feedback knowledge and track confidence as well. So if you have a reserve driver who's got a lot of feedback, it's going to help your engineers get, get more information on the ideal setup. Mm. And, and that will improve your performance through qualifying and race day. But obviously, it kind of comes at the, at the cost of one of your main drivers getting sure. to know the track a bit better. So you know, you're, you're, you're paying, paying the price in, in one way, but gaining, gaining in another. Mm. And also, from a, from a build the team point of view, you can also see that our reserve driver here is potentially yeah. going to be a better driver than our number that two driver true. at the moment. So yeah. we kind of want to get their experience. Yeah, our reserve driver well. could potentially be better than both of our main drivers. So we've probably got a future world champion in the making. Especially when the, it looks yeah. like their feedback score is more or less the same. the same. Yeah. So when you go through a practice session, you'll then come to a screen after this, which has not only a driver report, but you've got a media report as well. Yeah, you do. And, and it, gives you, it gives you that feedback of what happened. You get an idea of... of how the AI drivers got on, how your rival teams right, okay. got on, and what they were involved in as well. Okay, and it's it's not really a, it's not as formal as say, a press release coming out. It's it's almost like a Twitter feed that comes through. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. It's kind of a, that that quick quick reaction to a to a session that you see mm. on television. You know, it's a, getting ready for the next session, and there's a, a, a bit of kind of initial feedback, but yeah. you know, they don't really have time for anything more, so it's quick little bits of Twitter. And, and you get some more honest feedback as you well, do. rather than you just do. a race report. It can be quite brutal at times, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so qualifying is where, where the race weekend really gets started, yeah. and it's about getting your car into the, the optimal conditions and the optimal setup and, and getting all your temperatures into the right zone mm -hmm. so you can really maximize the, the performance you get from mm -hmm. the car and get the best lap time possible. And two guys in the garage here, people are starting to head out for their, their fast lap at the beginning. You mm -hmm. can see that weather condition wise, it's looking kind of stable. Yeah, we're looking a bit overcast, but there's no, yeah. it doesn't look like there's a chance of rain like yet. It doesn't look like there's going to be rain yet. But we can only actually see a few minutes into the future. Sure. And at the moment, we can see there's not that much grip on the track either. So that's, that's going to go up at the more that cars start running. Yeah. Out. And there is a prediction. There is a prediction there that, that it's going to go up. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, we can, so we can kind of, if this is our first session jumping in as a new player, we can kind of predict when is going to be the, be the best time to go out. Yeah. But a, but a smart player will be able to get better and better at it as the time goes on. They definitely will, and they'll be able to predict better. And if you've been upgrading your headquarters and you know, your telemetry centers and things like that, right. you're going to get better predictions here, and you'll be able to see further into the future as well. Let's send out our drivers. We'll start with this guy. And we didn't do practice, so we don't really know what the ideal setup is, but we'll pick the, the fastest uh, tire for the for the session, mm -hmm. which is the super softs. They wear out a bit faster, but 
you can get much better lap times from them. And I would imagine, looking at our standings here, That's everyone else is going to be on the quickest yeah. tyre at this point. And we're only really going for one hot lap, so it won't yeah. really matter too much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, tyre wear isn't a major issue here. So here we have the outlap optimization panel, mm -hmm. and this guy's now on an outlap, okay. and we can ask him to, to speed up and slow down. You'll get straight away the visual impact of that on the screen as well. Right, so okay. He's, he's so this is to up. get the brakes on the tyres at the optimum temperature to be able to do a quick lap. Yes, and if you nail this, if you get it absolutely perfect, you've given your driver the best right. chance of getting the optimal lap time from the car. However, you know, there's a chance he might make a mistake. Sure. That's your signing that you did sure. before the race weekend, is to make sure you have confidence in him. But he might be junior. He might, you know, he might lock up into the first corner and ruin that outlap when sure. you've just perfected everything. You see, I've left it sped up a bit too long, and everything's overheated. <laughs> and I've overheated everything, so it looks like he's probably not going to get the best lap time. But if my car's really good. I might still beat my rivals. Right, OK. Yeah. So yeah. when they're going out for their outlap, you're actually giving them constant feedback on you are. the condition of the car and telling them how to optimise yeah. it for when they finally cross the line for that hot lap. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's kind of set this up properly for North here, because <laughs> we didn't do a very good job with our last driver, who's currently down in 20th, but I think still out on, the, on their fast lap. Two green sectors, so it's not going too bad. And... The brakes, you'll see the temperature kind of goes up as soon as they hit a corner. Mm -hmm. So she's crossed the line in 17th, so it, that's not actually as good as the other <laughs> driver, but that's, that's, I guess, comes down to the driver and not just what we've been doing. Yeah, exactly. Before. Yeah, and we gave, gave North the better conditions to get, to get across the line in the fastest time possible, but she didn't do as well. But just before we go to race day, we can actually preset our driver strategy. Ah, okay. So whilst they're the cars are on the grid, we can tell our drivers to either take it easy at the beginning of the mm -hmm. race. You know, all the cars are grouped together at the start. There's a chance of, of having an accident, making a mistake. Sure. Or say if we're we're maybe second, we're sitting second on the grid at this point. You can tell your driver, let's start with everything turned up and you know be aggressive. Right. And, okay. You know, that hopefully get first place at the first corner. Sure. But there's so a de chance they might make a so mistake. So depending on where you start, if you're at the front, you kind of want to fight for position so that yeah. you can get clear. But if you're in mid-pack, you probably don't want them to have a crash you in the first don't. corner. Yeah, and, and at the same time, if there's a championship on the line, maybe you've qualified down yeah. the 11th, but you need to, need to finish 5th, you might, might at that point say, let's go for it. Let's, yeah. let's, let's go for it. Or the opposite, really. So depending on where you are in the season as well, you might change your strategy. You might, <laughs> yeah, you'll react differently accordingly. I think to begin with, I like to kind of sit back and watch the start of the race and, and kind of see what happens and hopefully we'll make up some positions. Looks like we didn't get the best of start from 11th, North still down in 17th and we'll see how we get on at the first corner, bit of chaos at the front and it looks like a couple of people changed positions so Wexler has managed to get up into the lead. Mm. We can actually see on the left hand side there's actually a lot of drivers on different tyre strategies yeah. at the moment. but. Uh, we can also, on, on our screens, we can see what tyres our drivers are on, what yeah. c what uh, condition those tyres are in, and also our fuel gauge and what strategy we're on. Yeah, you can, and, and we get a little more information about our cars, but you can see what, the, what your rivals are doing and get an idea from that as well and kind of build your strategy around mm. that. Um, one of the options that we have at this point, with North going up into 15th place, is that we can tell her to turn up her engine mode. And by turning up her engine mode, She's going to drive much quicker, she's going to a lot more speed down mm. the straights as the engine's pushing out far more power, but it comes at the expense of fuel and you'll, you'll be kind of managing your fuel throughout the race. Sure. So as we said, we, she was going to put more pressure on her tyres. We actually had, just had a message come up saying her tyres are getting worn, so we're probably potentially going to have to think about bringing her in for a pit stop soon. Yeah, we will. We are, so for the time being, we can actually ask her to conserve the tyres and, and kind of okay. eke out the rest of the performance to to go a little bit further, but as we're pitting this lap, let's, let's get some extra lap time out of the 30% the that she has left and ask her to push. The yeah, let's ruin the tyres to the end of the lap. So we're on lap five, we've managed to get, it looks like we've managed to get about, we'll probably get about six or seven laps out of right. this, out of the super softs, probably six. There's 11 laps of the race to go. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, unless we're gonna stop again, 
super softs probably yeah. aren't the way to go. So um, if we're going for a one-stop race, we need to go for a harder tyre, yeah. a more durable tyre. Yeah, uh, and in this this instance, let's go with the medium. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a bit slower, but it's going to last longer. It might get us to the end of the race. Mm -hmm. so. And we've got a few, few, few other options in terms of fuel, and if any of our parts we are do. broken as well, we can yeah, replace we do. them in the pits. Uh, and you can see that in this championship, refueling is an option. Right. So depending on the championship that you're in or the way the political votes have gone, yeah. you know, refueling is banned or re-enabled as time goes on. And in sure. this instance, fueling is something that we can do. Um, we've got 11 laps left and we should probably leave it with three extra laps of fuel in so we can actually get to the end. But we could decide to overfuel the car at this point as well. And in case we want to run around with the engine mode turned right. up. We, the car's going to weigh a lot more. It's going to sure. cost a bit of lap time and weight. But with the engine turned up at that, that point and, and pushing these medium tyres a bit more, we might She'll be able to be a bit find. more aggressive for the rest of the race rather yeah. than having to conserve it. Yeah, point. and she's eighth at the moment. Um, and you know, let's try and push through the field on those, those medium tyres. All our parts are looking okay at the They're moment. They're looking okay. They're looking okay. The gearbox could be a problem on the, <laughs> the front wing, but. Yeah, it looks okay. I think we'll leave them as they are. And the pit strategy-wise, we can we can go for a safe pit stop if we mm -hmm. want. Pit stop will take a bit longer, but you're right. guaranteed. You're nearly guaranteed to make sure that all the wheels are on the car sure. at the end of the pit stop. Or you can go fast. You, you know, we've, a couple of second pit stop really push the. But at the, the pit risk stop. of potentially get, getting something wrong. In exactly, the making so a mistake, might, losing a whole bunch of time. You might end up with a slower pit stop. If you, you might do. Right. You might do. But if they get it right, it might it might be worth <laughs> a position or two. Okay. So. So Vasquez is out, back out on the track again now. He's got fresh yeah. tyres on. And four laps of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going at a reasonable pace. I and mean, then we can see the relative pace compared to the you other can. cars on the track. You can. If we turn everything up, we should get, start getting potentially some fastest laps. Ah, okay, so because he, he was down half a second, but we had him on quite a conservative strategy. Yeah. So yeah. we've now turned his engine mode up and aggressive driving style. Yeah. And already we can see his pace come up. But And we're starting to get him complaining about the lack of fuel in the car. <laughs> Which He's is worrying surprising. about it. And drivers, they have different personality types. And right. different drivers will react to different ways to certain situations. This guy's not that happy about being out on with not that much fuel and starting to worry about his so strategy. Quickly. Even though this is me saying, you know, just listen to his boss. Um, so drivers can not necessarily ignore you, but you can, they, can, they can question whether you're making the right decision. Yeah, they, they can, and they definitely do. <laughs> um, and you can, you can give them uh, team orders as well. So if, if, if our drivers are stacked up near, near to each other, mm -hmm. you can actually ask them to, to either race mm -hmm. or you can let them through. And your drivers don't always listen to sure. everything you say from the pit wall. But we can see with Vasquez now, because we've put him on such a light fuel load and fresh tyres, he's now yeah. set two personal bests. Has set two well, not two, two personal bests, three session bests. The bets, fastest in the session, yes. That's the fastest lap of the race so far. So a, a decision that we made in the pit stops has actually yeah. put him as, as the fastest car on the track at the moment, even though he's still, at the moment, in fourth place. But yeah. he might be able to get those positions as the other cars yeah. go into the pits. So we've set our drivers now on a, a reasonable strategy. We might as well fast forward a little bit to uh, towards the, the end of the race. So Probably we've come down to the final lap. We've got all our parts <laughs> failing. We're running out of fuel, but we're still in fit. And Jenny's having trouble as well. So my car is probably not that reliable. Right. Not done that good in pre-season. So that's going to be <laughs> something that you'll have to, once the race is over, that's something that you're going to have to go back and do yeah. uh, in the factory. You're going to try and have to... It is. I think it's quite clear I'm going to have to work on reliability <laughs> once I get back to the factory, once the guys get home to the, uh, the headquarters. But we've taken the decision to, to leave them out there. And it looks like, at this point anyway, that Vasquez is going to come home and... Oh, he's actually gained a position. Managed to finish in fourth. He's gained a position yeah. in the last few seconds. Yeah. So yeah. we haven't won the race, exactly. We but haven't. Not even a podium position. No, but fourth, it's, it's a yeah. decent amount of points. It's not too bad. For the first race of the season, yeah. reliability is potentially going to be low. And this... You know, if this is you've just started a career and this is your first race with the team, you kind of need to bed yourself in and understand yeah. where to start. And as you say... We now know where to focus some of our work, development yeah. work. It's on reliability. It is on reliability. Maybe a bit of speed as well. <laughs> you know, 11th and 17th on the grid. We'll go well, for some possibly. speed and reliability. But that might be our strategy as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we didn't quite win the race this time. But as you say, we know where to focus on. So for next time, whether it's the next race or this race next season, we know... Hopefully we'll have developed the car a bit better by that point and our race strategy will be better as well. 
Uh, and I think that will do it for Win the Race. Thank you, Christian. And make sure to look out for the release of Motorsport Manager on the PC this September. We hopefully know what we need to focus on. And I'm just sorry, the engine, yeah, just, sorry. The engine just blew up. And that's, what I wanted. <laughs> that's really what I wanted to happen in the race. Ah. Oh. That's it for our mini-series. You can catch parts one and two by clicking the links on the screen and make sure you keep up with all the latest from Motorsport Manager by clicking the subscribe button below.